This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast. Of course, you can also hear us on the radio in Las Vegas on KDON 101.5 FM, as well as the Bet Las Vegas. I am with you here along with my partner, Mo Moten. I am Scott Branson. We are your hosts through this show and always. So we appreciate you guys being with us. Do us a favor, subscribe to the show wherever you get the uh, your audio, wherever you can listen to your podcast, you know, or radio, wherever, get it. You If you listen to the free Odyssey app, which is killer, you can listen to stations all over the country and podcasts second to none. You can get us there. Or if you're an Apple uh, podcast person, you're a Spotify person, you, wherever you get your stuff, you'll find us there. Just say Amazon. You know, when you're on Amazon, say, hey, Alexa, play Scott and Mo. No, play Silver and Black today and we'll pop up. Uh, Mo is the senior NFL writer over at Bleacher Report. He covers the entire league. You can also catch him on TNT, as well as uh, he is the Raiders columnist at sportsnot.com, where you also find my work. So uh, you can find us on x.com. Mo is Mo Moton, M O E M O T O N. I am at LV Gully. The show is SNB today, and we're getting geared up, ready for roster cuts. As we record this on Monday evening, Mo, uh, a, a few have trickled in uh, via sources, the Raiders as usual, are, are usual, well, I should say, as usual, kind of announce this at, at a late date compared to some of the other NFL teams. That's just the way they choose to do it. So we're not going to find out till tomorrow, or I should say, if you're listening to us on Tuesday, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, okay, or uh, that would be uh, 1 p.m. Pacific. But we do know some roster moves that have already been made, Mo. I know you talked about it. You had a Bleacher Report live on Monday when you addressed one of them. So far, not really any surprises of who we know about, uh, but uh, there's going to be some. There always is one or two. Yeah, I really liked Wu Governor, Wu DeMarcus Governor. I uh, thought he played slot pretty well during the, these exhibition games. And right before I went live on Bleach Report, reportedly coming from Aaron Wilson of KPRC2 in Houston, who has very good radio sources, mm -hmm. uh, reported that the Raiders let him go. So sad to see who governor go. I had him on my 50 man depth chart over on sports. Not didn't happen. Hopefully he makes it back to the practice squad. Again, as we're talking today, free agent, but as you know, Scott, after the initial rosters are set for all of these teams, there's going to be some post cut down tinkering trades additions and that's why i think the raiders are going to also be active in the post cut signings yeah and that that's one of the questions i have too because you have that you also had a slew of of players that you weren't really surprised by of course that were uh that the race raiders uh cut and waived but but there's also i think there's there's time there's time for us to see what's going to happen with this team because I still believe that they need to sign some bodies, which we'll get into in a second. But of course, they waived Terrell. These are all sources. I'm going to credit Levi Damian over at Raiders Wire, uh, who reported this early yesterday afternoon. And that was wide receiver Terrell Bynum, uh, defensive ta tackle McCorn McCall, uh, and Noah Shannon, both defensive tackle, and defensive end Ron Stone Jr. So those, those were four names that had come out via sources uh, from Levi Damian over at Raiders Wire. So again, no surprises. And and Mo, when you look at the roster and you think about players that were maybe fighting for roles, who who else are you sitting there? And if you're if you're one of those players, you're maybe biting your nails till tomorrow at 4 p.m. Probably Amari Gaynor, though I think of among the undrafted rookies, I think he has the best chance to make the roster. Amari Gaynor is on the bubble. Had a, had a great showing in that last exhibition game against the 49ers, but he was pretty consistent to me throughout throughout the preseason games. And I feel like he can give the Raiders a boost at the linebacker position, especially because I think Tommy Eichenberg is going to wind up on IR. Tommy Eichenberg missed a large chunk, basically all of training camp. Mm -hmm. And if the Raiders need another, if they're going to keep five linebackers, I think both Omaris, Amari Bernie and Amari Gaynor have a good shot, though they're both going to be biting their nails up until the deadline. Yeah, absolutely. And I know I've, I've seen a lot of people talking about Tyree Wilson. Oh, listen, Tyree Wilson is not going to get cut this year. No, just not. I mean, I, I would bet anything on that. Now, I've watched a lot of film this weekend of Tyree Wilson, and he's still really struggling. I'm not – we talked about this at length, so I'm not going to go in at length. But just because I've seen a lot of people talk the fact that he might be a surprise cut, including some national writers, which I just don't agree with, is that 
he he's constantly he moved him inside, which is fine. We talked about that many, many times, including last year when they did that. It seemed to work pretty well for him at times. The problem is even inside, Mo, he's getting stood up. If you saw last week's game, he's getting stood up by the 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 guards that he's going against. Okay. And now San Francisco, I know. Listen, Trent Williams isn't there. I know he plays on the other side, but you look at what he was able to do in San Francisco, it wasn't anything. He's getting manhandled at the line. So there's something not clicking. A guy that big should not be getting stood up and blown off the ball as much as Tyree Wilson is. I will say he's not getting cut, but no. if if he gets traded, I mean, it would be surprising to a lot of people because he's a first-round pick, but I mean, I wouldn't it wouldn't blow my mind if he was traded, but I don't think I'll just say, I don't think he is going to get traded, but if he were to be traded, it, it wouldn't blow my mind, but yeah, it's yeah, because clear. The value. It's, Where's the value? I mean, yes, he's a former first round pick, but if, if you seeing the film of him as, as he is right now, I just can't see a team uh, wanting to trade for him for anything of high value. Now as a throw in player with some other kind of deal, perhaps, but I, because of the potential, but I just don't see, Anybody, because I had somebody ask me that the other day too, and I just don't see it happening either. Just keep in mind, Tom Telesco did not draft Tyree Wilson. Right. So if there's a quick hook for him, I'm not saying you go out there and trade him and give up on him after you know before he even plays a game in his second season. But if he gets a quick hook, it shouldn't surprise you because not one of Tom Telesco's guys, and he hasn't he hasn't flashed at training camp, so it doesn't bode well for him long term. Now, yeah. if you're thinking about next off season, I think. The chance if he doesn't if he doesn't produce much this year in the regular season, the chances of him being moved next off season are much greater. With no question there, no question. Yeah, especially especially with uh, with the fact that that he didn't draft him as you mentioned. Now let me ask you this: You look at the Raiders. We've talked all preseason, Mo, and I think in the games you've seen a little bit of of this too. We've talked about kind of the, the performance of that defensive backfield. There's been some bright spots and there have been some question marks, still a lack of depth there as we've talked about. Um, but when you look at what, what this team did in the draft, right? You look at people like MJ Devonshire, who you've talked a lot about in the past. When you look at that defensive backfield, those young guys, those um, rookies who came in, we know Brandon Faison again is injured. And I love what you texted me the other day. You said, "Does he is he real? Does he really exist?" And for movie fans who've ever seen The Usual Suspects, that he's like Kaiser Soze, right? He's almost you think he's a made up guy, but you look at the Cameron Richardson uh, as well, and you start to think, you know, of those young guys, um, you know, who who might not make that? Who might not make it? And then you look at the safeties. Of course, with Trey Taylor, we've seen Chris Smith actually play some pretty good ball, but uh, uh, Trey Taylor coming in as well out of Air Force, a kid I really like as a rookie. Uh, when you look at those young defensive backs, who who's on the bubble for you there? I think Jaden Grant is on the bubble, but I have him on my 50-man roster soon because I love the way he played uh, during the exhibition games, and I yeah. thought that with Trey Taylor being banged up, as Vic Tafer of the Athletics said, I think Jaden Grant made the most of his opportunities on the field when it comes to cornerback and i said this during my bleach report live on monday the raiders have to make a move at the cornerback position yeah. for a veteran because even if you keep mj devonshire who struggled mightily in the preseason and to cameron richardson who also had his struggles you're looking at two rookie cornerbacks who clearly aren't ready for in-game action against starters they didn't look good against backups so you can imagine <laughs> you're going against starters in the regular season they're not ready and then face on as we said it's just has it been available? He's not reliable. No. So who's your veteran corner who's going to be able to step in if you have an injury within your starters? Jacoby, uh, Jacoby, <laughs> Jack Jones, Jacorian Bennett, and Nate Hobbs. If one of those guys goes down, you've got a major problem. So Tom Tesco has to be proactive in addressing the cornerback position. Yeah, it, we'll have to see about Taylor. But I do think the other young, you're talking about Devin Shire to Cameron Richardson. Obviously, those guys are going to be either on the roster and and not play much or they'll be on the practice squad, right? I mean, these are guys you want to hold on to because they have they have development opportunity uh and 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 you can project them to being some kind of good player in the future for the Raiders. They're just not ready, as you said. I think that's the best way to put it. So we'll see what they do from there. On that offensive line too, we saw I think the, one of the stories of of preseason has been DJ Glaze and DJ Glaze coming on. Now, whether or not he starts or plays over there, 
different story. But if you're the Raiders going into the season, if you have the projected starters up there, including Thayer Mumford Jr. on the right side, then suddenly you start to think, okay, we got a little bit of depth here, including some veterans who aren't going to light the world on fire, like Whitehair and some of those guys. But at least you feel better going in that you have some depth if, depth if somebody goes down. Here is my question at off, on the offensive line is, are the Raiders going to add a veteran tackle? Because mm. Andrews Pete, for most of his career, has played guard with the Saints. We saw him play left tackle in place of Colton Miller during the preseason, and it didn't look good at all, right? <laughs> so if you cut him, you're going to have to bring in a veteran offensive tackle because if DJ Glass has to play, you have no other offensive tackles left. If you keep yeah. Andrews Pete, you don't want him to play left tackle, as I just explained. We just saw what that looked like in the preseason. It's not good. So regardless of what happens with Andrews Pete, I think the Reds have to add another tackle. And I know, that, again, they have DJ Glaze there, but let's say Mumford gets banged up in the first week of the season. I'm not hoping it happens, but let's just say it does. And then yeah. DJ Glaze has to start. Now you have no other viable tackles on your roster with, with a ton of experience. So I, I think if if – of all the positions, cornerback and offensive line are the two areas the Raiders should address, especially if they are going to let go of Andrews Pete, who struggled a lot at the left tackle position against the Vikings. He allowed some pressures in the other games. So they, they're they going to have to do some tweaking there with the, within the backups. Yes, and, and I know uh, in this show, as always, we're going to get into some of what you guys have to say in the Raider Nation mailbag in the last segment. Next segment. We'll talk a little more about this Raiders roster and its health, because I think that's important heading in as well. But, Mo, I didn't know if you saw this, too, but you, the, the Athletic released its tiers of quarterbacks, and they ranked Gardner Minshew as number 25 in the annual quarterback ratings. Um, and oh, and offensive coaches in the NFL, and our, our friend uh, Mike Sando over at the Athletic is a great guy and part of um, the the Professional Football Writers Association, which I am a member, says this. He talked to an NFL coach who said nobody wants him to be a starter, probably even on his own team, but he won games with Indy last year. Uh, when you play him, the kid is competitive. He will keep you in the game, and then uh, it's going to be a fight. So, again, I mean, we're not hearing anything about – I know some people were bristling over Gardner Minshew being named 25th, and I thought, well, why wouldn't he be? But uh, again, this is the question mark going into the season. When we talk about this roster, they're going to go in with three quarterbacks, right? We know now the NFL, the new rule, the, the NFL Players Association said no to the NFL wanting to make that third quarterback uh, on the roster. Excuse me, wanted to, you could elevate them from the practice squad to the roster the day of a game if you wanted to. Instead, it's got to be like it was last year where you have to have that third quarterback who's inactive but they're on the active roster, right? They put the extra spot on the roster. So you have that, and it was the NFL team's way of trying to get an extra player, basically. Uh, but you look at that, you know it's going to be Minshew, O'Connell, and now Peterman. That's going to be the three quarterbacks. And so looking at that, if you're from the outside, look, again, they could do well with these guys, or these guys could all just suck an A, right? And so I think that that's going to be something we're going to we're the, the quarterback conversation will not end because I don't think either one of these guys is a top end starter. So I think at different times will struggle. And I don't think Minshew being the starter is in stone unless it goes really bad. But I think as we discussed last show, the first four games, Mo, um, I could see Minshew doing fine. And that's what he tends to do. He tends to do really good in two, three, four game stretches. And then you kind of get a fall off. So we'll see how that goes. But people, it's still going to occupy people's mind, minds until this team either comes out and, and performs better than anticipated or performs worse than anticipated. Well, Scott, some Raider fans will push back and say Carter Bradley should be QB3 over Nick <laughs> uh, But look, Carter Bradley had some flashes in the exhibition games. But if, you're ha if you have a QB3 and he's your emergency QB, right? Yeah. That's usually the guy that's going to just come in if your first two guys get gets hurt. You want that guy to be an experienced veteran because you're going to throw that guy right into the game, possibly, you know, likely in the middle of a game. You're yeah. not going to throw an undrafted rookie into a game mid third quarter. <laughs> you throw you throw a veteran who's been around the league and can handle that type of situation and and probably face that type of situation as a backup in Nathan Peterman. So I'm not saying that. Nathan Peterman has all of this upside. He's 34 years old, 
But with a QB3, you usually want that guy to be a uh, experienced veteran. That's what Nathan Pittman is, and that's why I have him as my QB3 over Carter Bradley. And he's better than Brian Hoyer. I'll put it that way, folks. So don't don't go there and think you're going to have like last year because I just don't think that would be. But hopefully they don't get to the third quarterback. That would not be good for anybody. Can't Uh, fall off the floor, can you? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Talking about better than Brian Hoyer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, we'll roll on. We'll talk about the Raiders roster and its health, right? There's still – we saw the offensive line. Hey, we saw Colton Miller back. We saw Jackson Powers Johnson given the clean bill of health and practice at least uh, as they get geared up for week one next Sunday. So we're getting closer to real football. We'll be able to react, talk about real football as well. So we'll get into that here next on Silver and Black today. So don't go anywhere. Come back. Mo and I will be waiting here for you. Don't go anywhere. All right. For our video audience now, uh, guess what? This is when we talk about our good friends over at bet us now let me get this screen the right way so i can get this there it is okay we got to show people what's going on okay so bet us of course you guys know a big big partner with us here at silver and black today and if you were going to bet football this year you're not sure where you're going to do it or you did it somewhere last year check out bet us not only do they have everything you could possibly want to including live in game action they also will uh, give you a personal account manager. They have the fastest payouts in the industry. And so there's really no reason not to. And we're going to start betting when we get into the season next week. Mo and I are going to start uh, betting against one another. We're going to pick games, I guess is what it is, right, Mo? And we'll show you all that when it happens. But I wanted to bring this up to you because I'm going to bet. I'm going to bet live here so people can see what we're doing, right, Mo? And I'm on the page because remember, Mo said the Raiders would only win two games. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's that's a complete lie. But go ahead, not. Scott. Yeah, it's, it's political season. We might as well lie, right? So, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. So, when you look at this, as you can see, I'm here on betus.com. You got to go up there and check it out, get an account. Oh, and by the way, I'll remind you several times, but there's a code below here on the video or in the podcast. If you click that link, you get a special bonus just for being a silver and black today listener. But, Mo, I, it, we're, the, the win total is still at six and a half for the Raiders, as it's been for a while. You picked them over that, right? You picked them at seven, correct? I the took the over projection? on this. I took the over on this. Um, there are a lot of Raider fans that were with me on this up until they saw the preseason games, and they have jumped ship. <laughs> but my bet is locked in with Bet US. There's no turning back for me. Yep. And we're going to do it live here, too, just to yes. show you that, you know, Real bets here. We're not just telling you, hey, just bet the Raiders because this is a Raider podcast. No, we're actually going to put our money where our mouth is on bet us and and bet the overall six and a half of the Raiders. Right. Because we don't we don't talk about products that we don't use. So as you can see here, if you're watching us, if you're not watching us and you're like, what are these guys talking about? Well, you're not hearing us anyway. So never mind. But anyway, if you're watching us on video, you can see the site up here. And by the way, again, bet us is so simple to get around it, it, live betting. They have casino games. They have horses. If you like horses like I do, you can do it there too. But what I'm doing, Mo, is because because we're, we're going to give a, an updated season game by game projection next week. But I will tell you now, and I'm going to go in here and place this bet so you guys can see me do it, is I'm going to go in and and bet the Raiders here. Oops, if, if it'll let me. I think it kicked me out. No, there we go. There we go. Um, well, maybe not. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go in and place my bets uh, here for uh, this. Check the sports. There we go. I'm going to go in. I'm going to select this, right? So the Raiders at over six and a half wins. On the money line there is 145. And so, Mo, I think I, you know what? I think I'm doing 150 on this. What do you say? Scott's feeling very brave today. Yeah, I think so. So so as you guys can see on the screen there, I'm, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. So don't just think we're doing this just to do it. It's not some, you know, commercial-ish. We're actually believing this. So I, how much more will the Raiders win? You'll have to wait until I get to my predict- predictions next week. But I am doing this. So I'm going to go and I'm going to place my bet. And there you go. Look at that. 150 to win 103. If Scott doesn't win this bet, his family can go hungry. So this is a serious <laughs> bet here replacing on bet US. Hey man, you know what? But I mean, listen, you know, if you don't think it's gonna happen, to put to put a <laughs> buck fifty on that is not right. But you can do this, and you know, again, you, the, the great thing about bet us is here. You can see here, I'm showing you, you can go week by week, you can go to all the uh cool 
uh, prop bets, receiving touch, you know, anything you want. You can even bet on the NFL awards, which is pretty cool uh, here as far as most valuable player, offensive rookie, uh, offensive player, all that jazz you can do there too. And will anybody go 0-17 or 17-0? Yeah. No. What is this Bill Definitely Belichick not. about? Let's look at this one too. Oh, Bill Belichick. Oh, his next, the next team, team, next team gonna coach. for next year. Look yeah. at that. So I'll tell you, you one go. team he's not touching, not the New York Jets. <laughs> exactly. Never. Although they're the favorite. Not, I don't see how. Like they, he, yeah. Remember, he was a New York Jet head coach for like, what, a day? Yes. <laughs> and then he that's resigned on happen. napkin. He yeah, resigned that's on not napkin. That's so, so there you go. So bet us, but look at this. I'm, I mean, let's do, do we want to bet he'll be the next coach of the Raiders next year? No. Oh, um, no, no, it's plus 1000. The team Houston Texans. So yeah, obviously you can see uh, teams with new coaches or teams that just don't seem giants. to fit the giants, but the giants Cowboys, the Cowboys are at even. I don't so see that. him and Jerry Jones arm wrestling for power in Dallas. I think he goes to the Giants where he, yeah. he was a defensive coach over there. He's very yeah. fond of Lawrence Taylor, so there's some history there. Yeah. Giants yeah. at plus 1,000 sounds like a juicy bet to me. It does. That one, too. I also think the Bears are interesting, although I just don't see him in Chicago either. Although with the quarterback there, now they got their offense moving, their defense isn't too bad. So who knows? But anyway, so there you go. So so again, you get on Bet US. Um, and check them out. Use a special link that you can find below in the podcast uh, or which we put it there too, or on the video here on YouTube. And you can also see it pinned in the comments if you're in there having fun with us today on the chat. So there you go. Just remember uh, BetUS, the best place to go bet it. You can get 125% deposit bonus up to $2,000 uh, thanks to our, uh, our partners over at BetUS. There you go. All right. Now we're back. Welcome back to Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast. Please subscribe to the podcast wherever you get it. Scott Colbranson, Mo Moten with you. We're talking about the Raiders roster. We don't have all the roster cuts yet because we're recording on Monday. But Mo, something, it, the, the cuts, you know, we'll get to that when they happen. But the health of the Raiders starters, we talked about the offensive line. We talked about the defense. We talked about Brandon Faison. We also talked about even Nate Hobbs seemed to get hurt again, which – been a great great player but he just can't seem to stay on the field when you look at this Raiders roster getting ready for next week's opener on the road in Los Angeles at their at their vacation home um how, how do you look at it what where are your biggest concerns when it comes to the health of this roster I think I pointed out in the first segment Scott start with the cornerback position if any one of their stars goes down you're starting the Cameron Richardson who's not ready as a rookie fourth rounder. Yeah. MJ Devonshire, who allowed, I believe, a perfect passer rating of 158.3 in the preseason. Or you're hoping that Brendan Faison magically gets healthy and is an Iron Man. Uh I, and by the way, he's been he hasn't been healthy for the last two years. Yeah. So it, that's the number one position for me as cornerback. Then you move up to the offensive line. JPJ Jackson Parrish Johnson is back, but what if something happens with Cody Whitehair or someone on the interior, Andre James or Dylan Parham? Do you trust the the backup guards on that roster? If Andrews P makes the roster, maybe you trust him as a backup guard or as opposed to a backup tackle, which he was not good at during the preseason. But um, I, I think the offensive line, even if you say interior or on tackle, they're they're a bit thin there. I think they need one more versatile offensive lineman who could potentially play guard and tackle, or a Jermaine Illuminar type yeah. player who can give one. you inside outside versatility. And, and I think I think they need to sign two cornerbacks. I really do. Because <laughs> to, no, to your point, and I'm not saying you're going to sign a cornerback that's going to be like a Jack Jones acquisition again. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you're going to get a guy that's your long term solution. But I think they need they need some veteran bodies who can who can be a band-aid until they figure out what the heck they're going to do. Now, if they can go out and get a, a, a difference maker like Jones again, great too. If it doesn't cost you too much, or if somebody's, if there's a surprise cut and people just do it for whatever reason, great. But I, I, I really worry about that defense. We talked about the run defense during the preseason. Didn't look great. Even with some of the starters in there. Um, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that one. I think they're going to, they're going to, they're going to gel and, and I think that'll be okay. But I worry about that back end. Now, if the front end's doing well, then the back end gets helped. 
but with the especially the early part of this this the schedule with who they're facing um I, I worry about those cornerbacks and i worry about the big plays i saw even even with some of these backups that you saw against uh, against um uh gosh who did they play i forgot i'm, I'm dying 49ers 49ers oh my gosh it's one of those days brother um the 49ers you saw some of those you're talking about not when the 49ers starters ran i'm talking about later in the game reserves going up against reserves and it was bad i mean it was bad even then so i think they need that veteran presence and then just the talent boost there uh and it's going to be a patchwork i think until they can get somebody to step up one of those young guys progresses because it can happen it doesn't if it happens three four five six games in the season so be it but until that point that's why they need somebody there i guess i'm not worried about the run defense as most people are as much as most mm -hmm. people are fans because right. As I pointed out, the run defense hasn't been good under Patrick Graham the first two years. Right. And their defense made strides and again was ninth in scoring last year. Now, if you want to see an elite defense, it's probably it's not gonna happen without a an at least decent run defense. So my solution to that would be find a good nose tackle who can come in and mm. alternate with John Jenkins. Uh, John Jenkins is up there in age. I understand he was solid last year, and that's why the Raiders brought him back, but they need a young nose tackle behind him. Uh, to take some of those snaps and, and be able to help them stop the run because for a while the Raiders had Jonathan Hankins and he was he was their primary run stuffer like he was that that was his thing you know he had a couple of years where he had some sacks with the Giants but he was their he lead run stuffer and, and after that they traded him to the Cowboys and I, again I understand John Jenkins is pretty good but he's up there in age he's in his mid thirties yeah you have yeah. to identify who who's the next man up behind him should he not return to the roster next year or if he burns out this year. So they let go of McCarr McCall reportedly. Uh, he was a 345 pounder that I thought had the potential, but obviously they didn't see it. And he probably ends up elsewhere on the practice squad, but they have to find some more help on the interior. Yeah. And, and I think too, that the one thing about this Raiders defense is much like the offense in some ways, of course, I think much further along clearly than the offense is, is 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 that maybe we're we're thinking a little too 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 much of the defense and i only say that not as a, not as a slight in any way but i just think that if you look at it the, the issues we're talking about up front that you just talked about the issues on the back end that i talked about just a few minutes ago there's some uncertainty with that defense i'm not saying they're not going to be good because i think they will be pretty good no matter what but the idea that they will carry the offense um is a little bit concerning i don't know if the depth is there because I think every defense has its moments, right? But when you have a defense that's good but lacks a little bit of the depth, injuries can kill you. Uh, and if or if you're someone's having a bad game, you don't have somebody to put in there, and then you you count on your offense to score more points because your defense is giving it up a little bit more. So that balance is going to be, I think, a very difficult thing for this team this year. I think I'm more confident in the edge rushers than I am the interior guys. Yeah. And that sounds strange because we talk a lot about how much we're concerned about Tyree Wilson, but the Raiders decided to keep Charles Snowden, who played well in that last preseason game against the 49ers. He could be a situational pass rusher. Janaris Robinson has continuously flashed since the Raiders picked him up mm -hmm. after the Vikings let him go in the middle of last year. So they have some depth on the edge. I, I'm never opposed to bringing in more edge rushers. You're in the same division as Patrick Mahomes. So if you can always if you can up, <laughs> upgrade the edge rusher position, so be it. But I'm more I'm more concerned about the interior after John Jenkins and Adam Butler and maybe Nesta Jason Vera, who I think should make the roster. Now, who's going to be your primary run stopper when John Jenkins is not on the field? Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I will give Tyree Wilson credit. Tyree Wilson, what I've seen in the preseason, um, he's gotten off some blocks when it's come to stopping the run. He's actually been okay against the run. Uh, but then, you know, Christian Wilkins there as well. How will he do? You expect him to do well. I had somebody tell me he's too old. And I'm like, he's 28. He's 28. What? Anyway, but I think Christian Wilkins, you know, is he going to get nine sacks? I don't know. Uh, but he's if, if, if they're weaker in the middle there, they're going to really count on him uh, to help out and make sure those edge guys are freed up. And Malcolm Kuntz, we, we, Malcolm Kuntz has been a great story, but it's all about consistency, right, Mo? Isn't that the word you've been harping on all preseason, right? Consistency. So we have to see consistency from Malcolm Kuntz this season again for this defense to, to get out. And the same thing with Spillane. So, so I think th this team, as long as they stay healthy and they're at full strength and the, they're, they're, 
accomplishing what most of these players were counted on doing, then yes, I think this defense can be as good as it can be. Um, but we'll have to see how they're able to to supplement it with additions and whether or not guys can stay healthy. And that's always been a big question. Here's the thing with Christian Wilkins. This is why I didn't mention him initially is because he's going to have to establish some consistency as a pass rusher. So before last year, he didn't have more than four and a half sacks in the season. He kind of right. broke out last year. Now, can, is he going to continue on that, you know, eight to 10 sack trajectory or does he revert Huge. back to, you know, three to five sacks a season. The Raiders need him to be around eight, you know, seven to 10 to be the inside outside compliment to Max Crosby and Malcolm Koontz. If he can get a push up front, it would definitely help them against the pass rush, which I'm not worried about. I, I do think the Raiders are going to have a relentless pass rush. It's the run defense I'm concerned about because if the run defense gets worse, and I understand it wasn't good the first two years for Patrick Graham, but let's say it dropped to 28th and then teams just say, look, we're not going to throw the ball as much. We're not going to challenge Jack Jones on the perimeter. We're not going to challenge Trayvon Mary get safety. They're onto the middle, the center of the field. We're just going to run it down their throats. And until they prove they could stop the run, we're going to run the ball 30 to 40 times a game, rack up 160, 170 yards on the Raiders until they, <laughs> until they could stop us. And I think the first test, the first game of the season is going to be a big test for them. JK for now, JK Dobbins and Gus Edwards are healthy. And yeah. they're going to get a healthy amount of touches, i.e. carries, right up the middle. So we're going to find out right away what that run defense is made of uh, week one of the season. Yeah, that's going to be fascinating. The last thing I'll talk about before we hit the break and then we get to the uh, Raider Nation mailbag and some, some new callers today. By the way, you guys have been awesome. You've sent in so many calls. We cannot get to all of them today, so we'll stretch it out. We'll have some of them uh, on, on later in the week as well. And if it continues, we'll have a separate mailbag show like we did last year as well. So keep it up, but we certainly appreciate it. But Mo, there was, a, I saw some, you know, light chatter because it's kind of ridiculous, but uh, the, the ESPN ranked the Raiders coaching staff dead last in the NFL. Now, if you read it, it's sort of like, it, again, it's all guessing games. It's all, hey, well, I'm looking at who their coordinators are. I'm looking at who the head coach is. I was not surprised by that because you have – as much as you like Antonio Pierce, he from from a from a national perspective, he's unproven leading a team. He then goes out and get Luke Luke Yetzi, who has baggage he's bringing from Chicago. Whether it's fair or not, we don't know. We'll see how he does. And then Patrick Graham, as you mentioned, he's had he had a good last half of last year, but people still aren't convinced on him. So I'm just talking about the coordinators and the head coach here. And you're basing your evaluation on coaches before they even play any games together, which I think is a little bit ridiculous, but. Being in the game, I understand why they do lists like this. Uh, when you look at this Raiders coaching staff, uh, we've talked about Luke Getze all summer. W and, and you talked about Patrick Graham the last couple of weeks with the run defense. Um, how important is it going to be for this coaching staff with this roster to get off to a good start too so that they buy in? So first of all, before I answer that, two <laughs> coaching staffs that I think are worse than the Raiders coaching staff. One, the Tennessee Titans. They have a first-time head coach in Brian Callahan who's never called yeah. plays. He's going to call plays. They have yeah. a first-time defensive coordinator in Denard Wilson. And the Arizona Cardinals, like, what, what has Jonathan Gannon shown? I know he was a good D coordinator in Philly, but what has he shown as a head coach so far in Arizona? And I know he had some injuries with Kyler Murray. I get it. Their offensive coordinator is still pretty much unproven. Those two teams stand out to me right there that the Raiders aren't the worst. I mean, yeah. at least Patrick Graham has something on his resume that says, okay, he could be a pretty good defensive coordinator. Now, but as far as the Raiders coach staff is concerned this year, I think Antonio Pierce kind of summarized it. He wants this team to get off to a good start, a fast start, right? If they can do that and build off of a decent start or a fast start, it's going to look good for the coaching staff. Luke Getz, as you said, has some baggage from his time in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Was it all Justin Fields' fault? Was it all his fault while the Bears' offense was stinky? We'll never know. But – if people like what they saw at Tyson Bajan, doesn't Luke Getzey get a little bit of credit for that? You know, a lot of people say, <laughs> why don't the Raiders trade for Tyson Bajan? He played well against the Raiders. He showed some flashes in a, as an undrafted player. Well, Luke Getzey was the play caller, was his play caller. So I, I think it's going to be important for this Raiders coaching staff. Patrick Graham has to obviously build off of what he had last year in a, in a top 10 scoring defense. And I think he can do that with the addition of Christian Wilkins and if Jacorian Bennett holds up at cornerback. But my focus is on Luke Getzey. Because we already saw, we, yeah. we have a bit of a resume 
that track record out of Patrick Graham. We have a track record from Antonio Pierce, even though it's a small sample size. We know the type of leader he can be in that locker room. Luke Getze, though he had two years with the Bears, you know, was it him? Was it Justin Fields? Now, Justin Fields is probably going to be a backup in Pittsburgh. But Luke Getze has a lot to prove because he has all of these weapons. So he doesn't have – I understand the quarterback position is what it is regarding Mitchell and O'Connell. But he's got all these playmakers. He's got Devonta Adams, Brock Bowers, who Adam Schefter said is going to – the Rays have big plans for him. He's going to be involved in that passing attack. Jacoby Myers, Trey Tucker got lazy, and now he can catch the deep ball. <laughs> you know, So there are, there are playmakers all over this offense. And if he can't muster up you know, 21 to 24 points a game with those playmakers, the Raiders have a huge problem. They do. We will see, right? I mean, it's it's coming up. Season's coming up, so we can put away all the speculation, the rankings, and all that stuff, and actually see, as Antonio Pierce says, the resume on the grass. So thank goodness for that. We can finally see this team play and see what they've they've done. Uh, by the way, the Tyson Tyson Badgett stuff is funny because it's like he's not Brock Purdy. So you want to trade? You need a franchise quarterback. You don't need another stopgap. You need you need a franchise quarterback. So the Raiders need to work on that. And we'll have that conversation another time. All right, we're going to take our final break when we come back here on Silver and Black. Today, we're going to get to your calls. That's right, the voice of the fan, the Raider Nation mailbag. You're with Mo and Scott. We're coming right back. Michael Vick at BetUS.com. Catch an incredible 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits plus 10% gambler's insurance. BetUS, my online sports book and casino. Enough of hearing us talk about the Raiders. It's time to hear from you. Any Oakland Raider fan, Las Vegas Raider fan, stand up. On this edition of the Raider Nation Mailbag. Got that black hole rock and rolling. Don't be a wallflower. Be a part of the show. Leave your question or message by calling 702-900-7869. That's 702-900-7869. Or drop us an email at mail at silverandblacktoday.com. All right. Welcome back. Silver and Black today, the Tuesday edition. We're getting, um, we're getting to the mailbag, Mo, as always. Got some interesting calls today. We got we got calls. We got international calls. We got first-time callers. It's good stuff. Before we get into that, though, we do have, and, and I'm sorry, I know a lot of you are going to say, hey, can we do it? We have a legacy Silver and Black today um, uh, fantasy league. Right. And we had our draft this week and here's the league. And uh, when you look at the teams, I'll explain. Uh, and we're going to get these guys and, and ladies because we also have our good friend, Wendy, who's in this as well. But uh, we did our draft the other day and uh, the teams, which we'll, we'll find you have myself, Mo, and of course, our good friend, Kelly Kreiner, my former co-host, and also, um, uh, uh, excuse me, Evan Grote, who used to host the just pod baby podcast now does some stuff for sports. Not as well. Um, he's in the league, but anyway, we had our draft and I just wanted to mention, how could I you not mention our guy, James, the champ? Oh, James, the champ. Yes. Thank you. Of course. Well, because champ. I don't want him to win again. I don't want to give him free pub. <laughs> I mean, he's got the belt. He's got all that stuff. No, James is awesome. He had a great draft again. Um, but also this, this team is the favorite this year. Mo's cheesecake. <laughs> I changed my team name just to 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 uh, annoy Mo because I was like, "What's the most annoying thing to Mo? It's got to be cheesecake." I even have the logo. Did you see the logo? I the, did. I yes. laughed about the logo. Yes. Yeah, so I, if thought, I thought Kelly pulled this off initially. <laughs> it's it would like, be a very Kelly thing. Kelly. It would it be would a very be. Kelly thing. But um, but I did it, and so we have that. But anyway, we're going to do that. I know there's some people out there, it's like, yeah, I don't want to talk about fantasy football, blah, 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 blah. But we have a league that is that is silver and black today. It's the show. So we're going to do that, and we'll share you guys, not only that, but the personalities. Because some great guys, our, our friend Rossi down in Australia is in the league. Mm -hmm. I mentioned just Win Wendy, who's in the league. James, you talked about there's a lot of guys in, in, in the infidel. I, I mean, there's a lot of guys in the in the league. And so we're going to get some of them on, especially if they have a good week. We'll have them on really quickly and talk about the league. But we'll we'll get it going. Um, I had a poor year last year after the previous year where I beat Mo a lot and Kelly. But this year, uh, we'll see. You know, draft grades vary, right? Mo, we got D's in one thing and the uh, B's in the other. So who knows? 
But anyway, we're going to have fun with that. And Just by the way, went 11 and 4 <laughs> last year after an abysmal first year in the league. Yes. Uh, went 11 and 4, had tied for the second best record in the league, but it wasn't in the cards to me in the playoffs. James no was. Pieces. No excuses. James snuck into the playoffs, I believe, with a seven and eight record and still he did. won it. He snuck in, but we all thought at the beginning after the draft last year, we thought he would win. We did. I mean, because he had a really good roster and then he had a bunch of roster troubles. But then his roster basically solidified at the end of the year where mine was the opposite. I had a good roster at the beginning and then had a bunch of injuries. And uh, Scott, what did we talk about with the Raiders? Got to have depth. Got to have depth. depth. You want to win some yes. titles. And that's what James yes. had. I'm lacking a little depth this year in some positions, but I, I do have good quarterbacks, so I'm open for a trade. All right, we're going to get to your calls. First up is our good friend, Gary Harkin-Reader, who usually writes us, right? And Gary's great. He's donated a, a bunch of books, Raiders, old Raiders books that he had that he sent to me about, oh my gosh, I don't know, maybe it might even be two years ago. We're going to get those into Murph and those guys. They're going to auction them off as part of the one nation foundation stuff too so uh but gary called in so let's hear from gary harkin reader hey scott mo gary harkin reader how are you great show as always appreciate your point of view and being honest uh i get two points the linebackers raiders are bringing in do you think they're using them to be more of a stop against a run maybe run a, a three a three four instead of a four three and my second question goes to the offensive side of the ball. How much do you think, once the Raiders are behind the chains, how aggressive do you think Getsy mm. will be? That's it. Hey, I'm from the Pocono area in northeast Pennsylvania. So uh, take care. Mo, if you ever get a chance, want to take a break and get out of uh, <laughs> New York City. I'm only two and a half hours on right. up on 80 West. There you go. See ya. Bye-bye. Take care, guys. All right, our, our longtime listener, writer, now caller, Gary yeah. Harkin. It's so good to hear from Gary, man. Yeah, I was saying right before we got on air, I was like, it's good to hear that we're going to get to hear Gary's voice for the first <laughs> time on this show. Yes. You know, quick thing, quick note, though. He says he's up by the Poconos. When I was in grade school, going to the Poconos was like a big deal. Big deal. When I was a teenager in New York City, like going to the Poconos was like, like going to Disney World almost. So, <laughs> Gary, I'm not far from you. Maybe I'll pop up uh, one time. We could talk Raider football. But I will get to Gary's thought about the about the extra linebackers. The I don't. I yeah. don't think they'll convert to a three four look or a three three five look in the nickel base and a nickel mm -hmm. alignment. But I do think the Raiders are adding linebackers because I think, and this is just my theory, I think they're going to play more four three base defense so four yeah. down linemen and three linebackers typically now in the nfl your nickel alignment is your base defense you only have two linebackers on the field but with their run defensive issues i think having another linebacker on the field a third linebacker is going to be important if you don't have the stopping up front so if your defensive tackles aren't getting the push aren't getting the stops at or behind the line of scrimmage your linebackers have to be able to come in and help supplement the run and i think again that third linebacker behind Robert Spillane, Divine Diablo is going to be very important for their defense. Yeah, and, and Mo, I, I agree with you. And I think if if the if the front does well and they see that consistently over the first couple of weeks, then you can back off that a little bit and show some different looks, right? Because you have more confidence. I think they just got to get the confidence there, but you got to play it safe to begin with, based on what you saw so far. And that's that's what we've seen so far is that the struggle against the run. Now, offensively, how aggressive does Luke Getzey get? I will say, Scott, I took a peek over at Bears Twitter last year, <laughs> and one of the gripes of, of him with the Bears Twitter was he wasn't aggressive enough. Right. Too many short passes, too many screens. So maybe with more a better group of offensive playmakers that he has, the Raiders, maybe he'll be more aggressive. He should be. If you got Brock Bowers and Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers and Trey Tucker and Michael Mayer all in the same offense, you better yeah. be more aggressive. Not to say yeah. Justin Fields didn't have any playmakers. He had DJ Moore last year quite a career year, but I think with the, the collective playmaking group the Raiders have, you should see a more aggressive move get to if he gets behind the chains a bit. Yeah, and I can see yards after the catch So with, with the tight ends, right? So Brock Bowers going out. I mean, think about what Travis Kelsey's done with the Chiefs. I know I'm not comparing the two players at this point in their careers. I'm just saying, though, that type of offense, that type of scheme where you're taking the tight end and you're, you're, you're sending them post over the middle or you're taking them on a seam – 
uh, and they break away because they're incredible athletes, then you can get the ball. It might be an eight yard pass, but he takes it for 25 because he's got the athletic ability to do. It. I think we'll see a lot of that Mo because you're right. They have so many different, the quarterbacks and for what you want to say about the quarterbacks, they have, they're going to have so many outlets here that as long as they can make the right reads, there should be somebody there. And you can usually count on one of these guys, hopefully because uh, the talent level is much higher than it was before. The other thing is they're, they're starting Garner Minshew, and he's a more aggressive quarterback than Aiden O'Connell. Yeah. So I think if you had Aiden O'Connell up there, maybe you play you probably play a little more safe because he's more inexperienced. But you got a, a six year vet out there in Garner Minshew who showed us in the in exhibition games, even though his accuracy was spotty, he's willing to go downfield. Even though he doesn't have Brett Favre's cannon arm, he's he's gonna he's gonna put all his might into that ball. He's gonna chuck it down 40, 50 yards. So with Garner Minshew on the center, you you would hope that they don't rein him in too much where you take away those big plays because you need those big plays, especially the guys like Trey Tucker using that speed downfield. Yeah. And that's why we've talked about Getsy a lot because the scheming here is going to be vital. I mean, with all those guys there and with Trey Tucker looking better with his speed, okay. With Devonte Adams and the ability of Jacoby Myers and the two tight ends and Dylan lobby coming out of the backfield and Bowers coming out of, I mean, there's so many different variations that you would expect them. Now aggressive doesn't necessarily mean highly vertical, right? You can be aggressive mm -hmm in how you come out uh, in intermediary passes, all kinds of stuff, and the running game. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, Gary, as always, my friend, thank you so much for being part of the show. All right, now we're going to South Dakota. Hi, Scott. I'm Mo. I'm Tori from 605. That's right, a South Dakota Raider. <laughs> wow. I really enjoy your show. I love listening to you guys do an honest breakdown of what's going on with the Raiders. I think uh, everybody is kind of upset about the – Minshew getting named quarterback, not so much that they don't like Minshew, but uh, they they just wanted O'Connell to uh, take that next step, mm -hmm. uh, take that second year leap. I uh, I think uh, we all knew what we were getting when we got Minshew. Uh, he is what it is, and mm -hmm. he's, he's a good quarterback. Uh, but he's not elite, and we're just kind of hoping that O'Connell would make that step and become an elite quarterback for us. Obviously, they didn't happen, so yeah, that is, it is what it is. And I guess uh, keep on doing what you guys are doing, and catch you guys later. All right. We got... <laughs> there we go. There we go. There Tori, we go. South Dakota. We appreciate that, my friend. Uh, and keep calling in. Uh, we always love getting new callers. Yeah, Mo, I think that is the, that that is a lot. We heard a lot of people who believed in and thought, well, boy, you guys are poo-pooing Aiden O'Connell as a franchise quarterback. I think he can do it. And he had an opportunity in this training camp to kind of come out against, yeah, it was tough because you had Gardner Minshew there. He's, he's an established guy in the league. He had a chance to kind of take that step, that level. We heard Antonio Pierce talk about him being more vocal and all that. And, and for whatever reason, it doesn't mean he can't develop because I think he still will, but but he didn't take that step fast enough, I think, to make it his job without a doubt. So whenever we talked about Aiden O'Connell, when a lot of people, in, a lot of Raider fans interacted with us and talked about Aiden O'Connell, the P word was used a lot. P <laughs> for potential. The Raiders fans wanted to see if Aiden O'Connell had the potential to be a franchise guy. While it, it could, while it looks like a long shot, you just never know. And I think Raider yep. fans wanted to see what was inside the mystery box of Aiden O'Connell. What kind of quarterback can he be taking first team reps in the off season, knowing that he has a chance to be a starter versus last year when he knew he was going to be the backup to Jimmy Garoppolo. And I think Raider fans were anticipating seeing the growth of Aiden O'Connell. The problem is, and Vic Tafer said this on Twitter, he said Aiden O'Connell basically just didn't show enough potential in this competition because if it was palpable, if it was there, he would have been starting, but it was close with Gardner Minshew, who's, let's be honest, a journeyman quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, they were even Steven and, and the Raiders went with the tiebreaker, went with experience as a tiebreaker in this battle. So he was never going to win the experience battle with Gardner Minshew. Obviously he wasn't going to win the mobility battle against Gardner Minshew. Obviously we knew that going in. So while he was the incumbent and I felt like if it was close, he would get the job because he has a familiarity with, the, with his teammates already. 
The Raiders went in the other direction and said, no, we're going to go with experience and mobility and hope to start the season strong, and we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. But uh, great call. We appreciate that first-time caller coming in and talking about the quarterback. All right, yeah. next we're going out to another new caller, Splendid Raider. Here he goes. Scott Moe, we're Splendid Raider here, coming out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincy! I just want to have a quick comment. I'll try to make it quick. There's so much to <laughs> unpack here with this quarterback situation that we have. Oh, um, I think this season, I think the ceiling is eight wins. I think the basement is six. Um, we we still need to address the quarterback situation. Everyone's talking about AOC. Was this, that, and the third? <sighs> we all knew AOC wouldn't go be – Shit, okay? Let's just call it how it was. Like, <laughs> he was a backup to begin with. We were just hopeful that we could build around him. Um, obviously, we tried to do that, but he is not the guy. Got Gardner Minshew, whatever that, you know, whatever that's supposed to look like is going to be. Um, mm. Definitely have the worst quarterback situation in our own division. Um, and we, we need to address this situation and next year's draft. And I feel like I've been saying this for the past 20 years. Uh, people talking about Dak Prescott and Tannehill and all this shit is like, and excuse my language, um, but <laughs> it's like, if, you know, we go go out and get Dak Prescott, we should have just kept Derek Carr. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to stop it there. I just wanted to call and, and get my comment in because I follow the show and, and comment a lot. Um, but, yeah, my expectations are, are, are null and void at this point. Go Raiders. All right, there we go. A call from the 513 <laughs> right in my own neighborhood. Hey, First man, of all, I, I, I don't know I, if he knows I'm in Cincinnati, but if you're around, next time you call in, you know, leave me your email and, and we'll connect. Cause when the Raiders are here against the Bengals, we're going to have a, a live show and everything. So, so get ready for that. Go ahead. I, I, I hear a little West coast in his, in his voice. I want to know if he ah. is originally from the West coast. I'm, I don't know. I just picked up, I just pick up certain dialects when people call in. Just, just curious about that, but he's along with me. And, and a lot of people initially before the preseason started, said I was too low on the Raiders. When I said eight, nine, he was like, oh, no, you're you're way too low on the Raiders. They brought in Christian Wilkins. A, a, you know, AP is the coach now. Devontae Adams mm -hmm. is all in. Raiders should win double-digit games. Then we saw the preseason. And now it's gone the other way. Now they're, those same fans are saying, well, the Raiders are only going to win four games. Raiders, you know, after the Raiders made their quarterback decision. And I think a lot of Raider fans would agree with him saying it's between six and eight wins. Yeah. Now, we just placed a bet with BetUS, right? And we took the over on six and a half. So we're right in that wheelhouse where I still feel good about the over there. But I, I like him, I, I just feel like the quarterback position really saps it. And I'm not saying that, you know, the Raiders are a bad football team because I'm going to say this for the 50,000th time. I, I strongly feel like the Raiders are quarterback away from being a perennial playoff contender with what they have around the quarterback position offense and with the defense. Really quick, Scott, too. Yeah. Cohen mentioned Dak Prescott. Let's keep in mind, Dak Prescott led the Cowboys to 12 and 5, three consecutive 12 and 5 seasons. Now, he had a really good defense the last few years, but the Raiders supposedly should have a top 10 defense. So if you put Dak Prescott with what the Raiders have, why can't the Raiders, you know, win double digit? Mm. games in the season 11 12 games like he's done with the cowboys for the past three years well he and he, he compared prescott to Carr, which is interesting dak prescott two and five in the playoffs so he's played in seven playoff games now he hasn't been successful Derek mm -hmm. Carr has only played in one playoff game and he was zero and one their their career stats of course dak prescott two years younger he's got a uh, ten thousand less yards of, of um passing but he does have uh and and 40 touchdown passes less um car 180 107 interceptions to uh prescott's 74. so i get what he's saying there but i wonder because i like outside of of course unfortunately for Derek carr when he got hurt in 2016 that wasn't his fault that was a pretty good raiders team and then of course they sneak into the playoffs in that tumultuous year with rich basaccia uh but dak prescott has had i think a more even level career and gotten to the playoffs more they just haven't done well in the playoffs 
I don't want this. I don't want to turn this into a Dak Prescott versus Derek Carr no. debate here. But I, I will say that you also got to keep in mind with the volume stats. Derek Carr has been in the league longer than Dak Prescott. Yeah. Derek, Carr, Derek Carr came in the league in 2014, so he's had mm-hmm. two more years of play. I, I look at what Dak Prescott has done in a single season. So three of the last five years, he's been over, I believe, 40, 4,400 passing yards. He led the league in touchdown passes last year. And he did that with CeeDee Lamb and Brendan Cooks and Jake Ferguson, who's an underrated tight end. Again, yeah. can you imagine what he could do with a Devontae Adams yeah. and a, a Jacoby Myers and a Brock Bowers and a Michael Mayer and a Trey Tucker? I think he could put up similar numbers and get the Raiders to the playoffs. Now, what he does in the playoffs is a whole different story. We're not That's, saying Dak Prescott is, a, is, a, yeah. is the greatest quarterback in the world. He has his playoff issues, but I think he can get the Raiders to the playoffs. And, and if you can just get to the playoffs where anything can happen, it opens up a whole box of possibilities for you. But I, I actually think Dak Prescott is going to resign with the Cowboys. I, I do too, because I don't see Jerry Jones letting him go. Right. I mean, you just, you know what you have. And I'm not saying he's the best quarterback in the NFL, but he's really good. Yeah. And I mean, like you said, three of the last five years, the one, he was at 4,449, 4, 4, almost 4,500 yards in 2021, was almost at 5,000 yards in 2019. And 4,500 yards last year, as you mentioned, with 36 tu- 36 touchdown passes. Ooh. But anyway, my man in Cincinnati, thanks for being with you. It's good to be in the same area code as well. So I don't know if you know if I was in Cincinnati, but I'll, we'll let you know about the Bengals game when the Raiders are here. You'll have to meet up with us. All right. Our last call of the day is from someone who's calling before. It's Tropical Remy. You remember Tropical Remy, right? Here we go. Hi, Scott and Mo. This is Tropical Remy from Kansas City. Grew the chief, by the way. Start off with that. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to put each of you in the GM chair. Oh, and who? How? And how would you like to fix your uh, quarterback situation with the Raiders? Uh, who? Who would you like to be the next quarterback? Who? Who? Look, who looks good to you? And I figure I just kind of keep it light and upbeat. So, yeah. Thanks. All right. There you go. Tropical Remy. Thanks for calling in, man. Uh, Mo. So. So. I think. We talked about this, and just to bring it back up, Tropical Room, in case you didn't hear it, the the free agent class next year is not great. We talked about Dak Prescott being the only really gem in the free agent pool. Now, things can change. There might be trades possible with, with other starters around the NFL. But I think I think that the, the Raiders have to go big in the draft. There's not going to be as many. Look, everybody's always looking for a quarterback. But this year was a tough year for them just because there were so many teams at the top of the draft who absolutely needed a quarterback, right? We talked about Chicago. We talked about Washington. All those guys went early, New England. Um, Now, this time around, Mo, the class is not as heralded, but there is, I think, in the top four guys, um, quarterbacks that if I'm the Raiders and I can move up and take them, it's always a gamble. doesn't matter where you take a quarterback. It's going to be a gamble. I would go up there, whether it's Quinn Ewers or it's Shadur Sanders, who I'm not huge on, but he's there. I can see it. Or Carson Beck out of Georgia. We'll see how their their seasons pan out. But if I'm the Raiders, Mo, next year, especially if if you have an okay year, if you're in that 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 purgatory we talked about, where you're one win below or above 500, you don't make the playoffs, that kind of thing, and you're in the middle of the first round, they got to do what they can to move up as long as it doesn't damage them for other needs they have. They have some cap issues next year. They have some guys coming up that they're going to have to either uh, extend or they're going to have to replace. So there's a lot of parameters there. But early on, I'm going to say what I thought they should have done last year and they just couldn't, which was they got to do whatever they can to get in the top end of that first round and get a young quarterback. Well, the first thing I'm doing is I'm making the the quarterback room a little more athletic and I'm trying Mm -hmm. to get Dorian Thompson Robinson, not because he's the answer, but because I think he has some developmental pro, uh, upside there. A lot of Raider fans were calling about Hendon Hooker. I think the Lions are going to keep him as their QB too. I think Dorian Thompson Robinson is not, again, not he's not the answer, but is he someone that I think is intriguing as a developmental quarterback, a little more intriguing than Aiden O'Connell, specifically because Dorian Thompson Robinson actually played in some games for, for, uh, Deshaun Watson last year with the Cleveland Browns. Mm-hmm. And again, he has the mobility. So he has some tools that you can work with to develop. Not as your franchise guy, because I don't want people running out and saying, Mo thinks Dorian Thompson Robinson is the answer to the Raiders quarterback situation. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just trying to upgrade the quarterback room with a more mobile 
more athletic quarterback in today's league because you need a quarterback that can move. And Luke Getzey mentioned that in his introductory press conference. Now, in the offseason, I think the Rams would be able to get a quarterback, uh, whether they trade up or stand pat wherever they draft, because I think there are going to be fewer teams that need a quarterback exactly. next year than they were this year. So they'll be able, I think they'll be able to get a potential franchise guy in the middle of the first round. I don't think they'll have to be as aggressive, but if the opportunity is there to move up, I do it. The guy that I'm going to bring up is the guy that I brought up this year, but he wound up going back to school and playing at Miami. Cam Ward is a guy that I'm going to be watching a lot over the weekends this uh, this fall. So there are going to be other options. Every year we see it where a quarterback isn't projected to go in the first or second round, and then he has a spectacular year, and then declares, comes out for the draft, and then people are saying, wow, this guy could be a top five pick. So I'm willing to reserve my, my opinion on who the Raiders should focus on. I want to see how this co collegiate season plays out. And then we can have a deeper discussion about, you know, where the Raiders land as far as where their record is mm -hmm. and who could be available for them. But I'm definitely going to be aggressive if I can to move up to get my potential franchise quarterback. Absolutely. And I, I'm right now. And again, like you said, before the season starts, so we'll have to see how it goes in the college season. But I think Ewers at Texas uh, with his arm, what he's able to do, he's got the, enough mobility to be that guy. I know he's not a, 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 as sexy as some of the others, but I think, you know, he'll put up a big year. So we'll see what happens with him. But I like your Dorian Thompson Robinson as well. Number one, it'd be homecoming for him to come back to Las Vegas because he went to Bishop Gorman High School in Las Vegas before going to UCLA. His mom is also a professor at UNLV. So mm. you can't think of a better yeah. situation. Let's go back, be close to mom, play in Las Vegas. So I would like, and in, in the fact that you brought him up was great, Mo, because because I would like, to your point about them making the 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 the, the quarterback room more athletic, and we'll see what happens with Aiden O'Connell, what they decide to do with him. But if you had a young drafted quarterback, you have a young developmental quarterback, whether that's Dorian Thompson Robinson or O'Connell, which obviously uh, DTR is more athletic. And then you have a guy like Minshew. To me, I like going into camp with those three options because you got the young stud coming out of the draft. And if he does really well, like we've seen uh, some of the quarterbacks this year do, then great. Then he goes and he's your future now. If he doesn't, then you have two other quarterbacks there who can who can uh, you can develop and you can also um, count on if you have a veteran whether it's O'Connell or it's it's, it's Minshew uh, they have Minshew on a two year deal anyway so makes a lot of sense so we'll see what they do but uh, great call there Tropical Ramy we appreciate you calling in as always also if you want to call in and be part of the show 702-900-7869. again if you call in and don't hear your call right away apologize uh but we got so many of them we can't get them all in we don't want to give you two hour shows we don't most people don't like to listen to shows that long they might watch it on youtube but we will do that and we'll get a different show we'll get an extra segment like we did last year we, last week we did an overtime segment well remember we went for like 35 minutes just on calls which was awesome mm -hmm. so we appreciate that as well but call in leave us a message or you could text us we did have some text messages i will get to those in the next show too some great stuff from all of you guys so thank you again as well mo as we head out of here on this tuesday let everybody know what you got coming up because you know they gotta they they, they don't want you to turn to a cheesecake binge <laughs> so first of all thank everyone who joined me tuesday for my bleach report live breaking down the raiders initial 50 man roster though there probably will be more changes before week one uh my sports not piece is already up you can compare my projections to what the raiders did and see how how many i predicted right or wrong but scott i you know we're close to week one so i'm gonna go on a bit of a hiatus Ooh. i'm gonna go on a darkness retreat after our next show wow. then come back ready to go firing off some good raider bets Yes. Futures and props. If you've been following me on Twitter, M O E M O T O N, I've had several prop bets for the Raiders specifically over on Bet US, and a lot of people have been responding well to them. I had a Jack Jones prop bet over uh, over one and a half interceptions for the season. A lot of Raider fans joke that he could get that in the first few weeks of the season. So if you're, you know, if you've been looking at that prop, it's over on Bet US. A lot of other books don't have it. Jack Jones. Over one and a half interceptions over at Bet US. I love I believe that. It's plus one ten, so it's even Amazing. plus money. It's stealing money. People go over to Bet US and place that bet. Stealing money without the threat of going to jail. It's great. <laughs> it's great. 
So yeah, do that. Mo and I will have a bunch of stuff, a bunch of content up there around these games this year as well. Thanks to our friends at BetUS as well. So make sure you check that out. Also make sure you check up on, uh, Mo had a great piece on Monday, the 53 man roster piece up on sportsnot.com as well, as well as his work on Bleacher Report. And if you follow him on X, you'll be able to find it. Mo Moton, M-O-E-M-O-T-O-N. I am at LV Gully and we'll be back on Thursday with another show and we'll be back on radio on Sunday as well. I can't wait, man. Just kick off these games. I got one more weekend before we got to start working Sundays again, Mo, but that's okay. I'm excited about it. And I know Raider nation is there caught. Be cautiously optimistic. You know, we talked about this show. Are you optimistic, pessimistic? I think you have reason to kind of be somewhere in the middle and that's not a bad place. You can still be. Scott, yes. Be, be overly optimistic. Be excited for the season. Be like just when Wendy, She's awesome. like Murph. She's always all. You know, predict the 17 and 0 season until you're proven wrong. Because we <laughs> we want the excitement. We want your calls in. We we want all the interaction with yes. the fun Raiders season that Gardner Minshew may give us with some aggressive quarterbacking. So there'll be a lot to talk about this year. Be excited for the 2020. And he's got the swagger, right? The swagger's there with him, which I think even in tough games, you, if if they don't win, if he's got that swagger that Raider fans love. Yes, you want to win. So don't get me wrong. There's never a good day when you lose. But at least you can have that attitude. And I like that that's back and and we'll see how it all runs out. But it's going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be fun. And I really want them to 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 win in week 1 especially. Week 2 is going to be really tough. But week 1, that's a big that's a big game I think. You got to start you got to set the table, man. You got to set the pace for the course of how your season is going to go. And what better way to do it against a division rival? And the biggest doofus is an owner in the league. And that is, of course, the Spanos family. So we'll see how it goes. But Mo, we'll be back here on Thursday. Hopefully taking more calls. We got a lot of people we will. calling in and talking. We, we, we will get to those. We so will. We're going we're gonna to have a guest uh, on Wednesday, uh, which I will announce ahead of time. And then next Next Tuesday on our first show, going into the first week of the season, even though the Raiders don't have a home game for three weeks, now four weeks from now, um, we're going to have Josh, Josh Camite from Raider Dad on. If you don't know about Raider Dad, of course, Murph and his crew at, um, at Raider Nation Radio and the One Nation Foundation have donated money to them. They help take kids to the game because you know how expensive Raider games are. Games in general are expensive no matter where you are but Raider games, especially. So we're going to talk to him about the progress because he keeps talking about, well, I know, I don't know if we're going to be a big charity. I'm like, brother, you're already big. You're doing great work. So we're going to have him on to talk about what they're up to and how you can help because Raider nation always likes to help one another. So we'll do that as well. Mo, we'll see you on, on Thursday. Talk to you Thursday. All right. For Mo Moten, for our producer, Mike Robbie, I am Scockle Branson. This has been silver and black today, entering our eighth season. We can't wait. We appreciate you guys being with us, and we will talk to you again on Thursday.